have a couple more people coming in. Good evening. You're all the way in the back. <laughs> hey, thank you all. I know, and there's, there's a lot of competition tonight. There's a football game, Bernie, and there's a spin class at 7. And um, <laughs> there's also our friends from Metro who have joined us tonight. I've known Mindy Lake for maybe five or six years, and I remember about maybe two and a half years ago, she said, you know, we're going to be building the subway, and I wonder if you at Park La Brea could be part of communicating each of the progress jobs that are going on every, every couple days I get a notice from Metro. And about two and a half years ago I said, yes, Minnie, I'd be happy to participate as the neighborhood advocate, not realizing that that was an eight-year commitment. So we're into building a subway and it's moving closer to Fairfax. It's very exciting to know that our neighborhood is transforming in a way that is going to really be exciting as far as walking, museums, and everything around us has turned out to be, you know, quite well done. And as Metro is our partner, and as Mindy will explain, there's still going to be some growing pains, but we want you to all be aware of what that really looks like, because the end result is going to be really important for all of us so that we can get around Los Angeles, you know, in, without much of a challenge at all. So that's exciting for our neighborhood, and that's a transformation for our neighborhood. So I appreciate everybody coming out tonight because it's important information as we continue the challenge of what Wilshire's going to be and what the Metro will mean for us. And there's no better person than to communicate that than Mindy Lake. So please welcome her from Metro. Well, thank you. So I'm Mindy, and I was here approximately two years ago when we were in the throes of what was known as the advanced utility relocation work, which to you probably looked like construction, but from Metro speak, that is pre-construction. But now, I'm hearing a reverb, are you hearing this? Um, but now, we are in full-on construction for the Purple Line, and as you know, we have been doing a lot of work down at La Brea, and we've gotten through many of the major construction elements at La Brea that is now going to be happening at Fairfax. So that's why we're here tonight to talk to you about where the advance of construction is going in Fairfax. So this is, the upper line is the entire alignment. We're building three new stations that is extending the purple line from Western. We're building a station at La Brea, at Fairfax, and La Cienega for section one. And then section two will go further into Beverly Hills, Century City, and Westwood. And now with the passage of Measure M, Hopefully we, and perhaps LA getting the Olympics, we may actually be able to get the entire alignment done by 2024 instead of just section one by 2024. So we'll see, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. This is what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. Wilshire La Brea is currently beyond the decking phase, so they are now excavating underground to build the actual station entrance itself and get ready for what is known as the tunnel boring machine that will go to Western, come up, turn around, and then come back so that we can actually build the tunnel. Oops, sorry. And this is a rendering, it's not an exact rendering, but it is a rendering of what the Fairfax station will look like the station entrance will be at the corner of Orange Grove and Wilshire, just east of the Peterson Museum and just south of what will be the Ampus Museum and LACMA. And what you can see at the bottom, that rectangular outline, is the actual station box itself underground, which is approximately 800 feet of station platform. When you go down the escalator and you're standing on the platform, that's essentially the outline of that platform. And it goes from Ogden to the east, to about the front door of the 99 cent store on the west side of Fairfax, underground. This is the timeline of essentially where we are. We completed advanced utility relocation. We're in the middle of piling. We've already done most of the piling on the east side of Fairfax, and we're moving through the intersection over the next several weekends, which is why there's a little more uh, lane closures at Wilshire and Fairfax on the weekends, and then we'll do the rest of the piles west of Fairfax. And then we move into the decking, which is where we do the weekend closures. This is 
an indication of the kind of work, I don't know if you've seen the Ogden Staging Yard, it's the big fences that is directly south of LACMA, there's a lot of walls and we have all our Eat Shop Play banners around it and you see trucks going in and out of there. And these are the kind of elements and things that are going on behind those walls. Actually, this was several months ago, there's a lot more work going on there now, but that is the staging area and will eventually be where the entrance to the Fairfax station will be located. So they have to build the electrical vault information and the ventilation and everything that has to go on. That's the electrical vault in the upper right, the outline of it. And we have a very, very persistent street sweeper who goes out once we've done work outside of the staging yard and circles the streets and cleans up all of the dust and anything that comes out tracking from the trucks. And we are very conscientious of our neighbors. We have our staging wall directly next to a residential property and we have 24 foot sound walls up against that building. And we are constantly reminding the workers to be quiet and conscientious and um, considerate of the neighbors. And to date, I have to say, I have not gotten any noise complaints since we put up those sound walls and I live about a half a block away. So I would be the first one to complain as Billy, my colleague, will tell you. So I'm gonna turn it over to Billy because he represents the contractor who's actually doing the heavy lifting on this project to explain to you about the piling effort and then what we're moving into with decking. So Billy Parent, if you could come up. And there's also a laser pointer if you wanna use it on your Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Billy Parent. I'm with uh, Skanska Trailer Shea. We're the joint venture company that's doing the majority of the construction um, on the Purple Line extension for phase one. So I'm gonna talk about kind of the construction processes, how we're really building uh, the Wilshire Fairfax station and uh, the line in general. So what you see up on the screen right now is a slide explaining the pile installation at the Wilshire Fairfax station. And so what we're doing is we're installing about 95 to 100 foot steel beams underground to form the outline, kind of the foundation of the Wilshire Fairfax Station. So the Wilshire Fairfax Station, and, and same with La Brea and La Cienega, it's really like taking a high-rise building and flipping it horizontal and then putting it 90 feet underground. So we're, we're, we're doing that process and the first step in that is the piles. So as Mindy said, up at the Urban Lights at Wilshire and Ogden, we're, we're piling um, on both sides of Wilshire north and south across Wilshire and then down all the way to the 99 cent store through the Fairfax intersection um, to create that rectangle of what will be the future station. So you can see the picture that's piling on the uh, north side and you can see kind of the tar impacted soil that we're, we're digging up and then our work zone with the sound blankets um, and equipment. So that was a picture of Fairfax piling on the north side. This is our setup currently on the south side. So we're well underway um, piling both on the south side of Wilshire and uh, the south side of the Fairfax intersection on weekends. If you've noticed, uh, if you go down Fairfax on a weekend, you may see some lane reductions, uh, maybe a detour. And that's because we're piling through the Fairfax intersection on those weekends uh, due to the lower volume of traffic on the weekends. And so that's kind of a bird's eye view looking west. You can see the Peterson Museum, uh, the May Company building, kind of down Wilshire in the Miracle Mile. So after the piling, after we complete that foundation work, we then move on to station decking. And what this is, station decking, it's a construction process uh, for doing underground subway work where we build a temporary street um, to allow for traffic to travel on that street and to also allow for underground work to proceed um, while the, the street remains relatively kind of what it was before we started the subway construction. So these pictures, if you start top left, what we do is we uh, remove the asphalt of the existing street. So you can see top left that, that asphalt removal occurring. We then do a street level excavation uh, where we excavate Wilshire Boulevard. You can see asphalt and dirt. Bottom left now. So what we do is we install steel beams across the entire width of Wilshire, so about 70 feet. 
and we install those concrete deck panels. Each one's about nine feet by 14 feet on the steel beams. And what you have at the end is a brand new temporary street that allows traffic to travel on top, underground work to proceed underneath. So we've done this, we've accomplished this at La Brea. These pictures are from uh, the La Brea station decking. Right now, we're about 15 to 20 feet underground at La Brea. So I wish I had another picture to show you of what our underground setup looks like down there at La Brea. You look up and you see steel beams and concrete deck and that's where you're traveling uh, when you drive on Wilshire at La Brea. So this slide just goes into the, the details of the Fairfax station decking specifically. The Fairfax station is about 800 feet on Wilshire Boulevard from the 99 cent store to the urban lights. Uh, approximately seven, 70 feet wide, so just about the width of Wilshire Boulevard, and then it goes down about uh, 60 to 70 feet deep. So in order to accomplish this decking, what we need to do is um, fully close Wilshire on weekends. Um, and the reason for that is because it's, it's work that involves the entire width of Wilshire. And so leading into that, you know, we're, we're looking at starting that work February 2017 um, and what we'll be doing, we'll be doing decking, some piling and a little bit of other kind of civil uh, tie-in work like on sidewalks and such um, in the Wilshire Fairfax area. And so through all these closures as, as we've done in the past and we'll continue to do, we work with first responders really closely to make sure that they have access to where they need to go in the event of an emergency um, and other various things coordinating with local agencies. So these full closures for the station decking, they're gonna be done um, in phases. We've scheduled it out similar to La Brea um, in three phases. So phase one will start on the east end at Ogden and it'll occur between Ogden and Fairfax where we'll build this temporary street. And we're anticipating about 10 weekends for that work. Um, phase two will then have moved west of um, are moving to the west to the Fairfax intersection and for that intersection decking we're anticipating about four weekends then we're west of the intersection between about Fairfax and the 99 cent store and that section work will be another four weekends total 18 weekends um, all of this information too is provided in the brochure at the back we really encourage for you to take that home um, it serves as a, a great guide for scheduling detours, all the, the nitty gritty details. So in addition to this, um, the weekend closures, so they'll start Friday, full closure at night between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. And then the street will fully open on Monday at 6 a.m. Um, we'll start lane reductions in the Wilshire Fairfax area on Friday mornings. So if you're driving in the area, you may see some lane reductions, work starting. Um, and the reason for that, we did that at La Brea as well. Um, it's to get the noisier work done during the day uh, so that we don't you know, create high levels of noise at night for residents. Um, it was really effective at La Brea. We received very few uh, noise complaints. We get that asphalt removal, the noisier work done. Um, and then we move into more of the excavation, which is, is really just dirt removal um, at night. So this slide speaks to the process a little bit, how we get to that first full closure, setting that first cone. Um, there's an extensive vetting process with the city of Los Angeles. We work closely with LADOT, Los Angeles Department of Transportation, um, LABOE, Los Angeles Bureau of Engineers, and then finally we get an approval from the Los Angeles Board of Public Works, which is actually a public hearing um, and a board vote. So the, the Board of Public Works receives a package um, of all the engineering details, all the, the traffic details, pretty much everything that's going to occur, and then they vote and approve it. So now we're gonna jump into the work zones and the detours. Um, this is for phase one, so starting up at Spalding and then moving west to Fairfax. So the real, um, the work zone, the decking will be between Ogden and Fairfax. 
we have a little bit of an extended closure to the east for both staging and traffic management. DOT um, believes Spalding's a better street, not just believes, they study that Spalding's a better street to handle volumes of traffic than Ogden. And so this will be the detour for that work zone in phase one. Uh, the detours will be, it'll use La Brea, 6th Street, and Fairfax. So that will be both eastbound and westbound. So if you're driving westbound on Wilshire, you'll reach a closure at La Brea. You'll be detoured up to 6th Street. Of course, you can continue to third or, or take any number of other routes to get around the closure. But this is the prescribed DOT detour where you'll, be, you'll see signs directing you to 6th Street. So you'll continue on 6th Street and then down Fairfax and continue westbound. Um, this green bar represents local access. So this stretch of Wilshire between La Brea and Spalding will remain open via side streets uh, so that you have access to all that business and, and uh, uh, all the residents in there have access as well. So this is phase two. Uh, this is for the Wilshire-Fairfax intersection. So the main work area will be here right in the, in the intersection, and then the closures will extend um, in each direction to the west, Crescent Heights, to the north, 6th Street, to the east, Spalding, and to the south, <laughs> Delvai, thank you, Mindy. So this is our, our uh, detour for Wilshire traffic during phase two. Um, if you're coming westbound, the detour will be La Brea, down to Olympic, Olympic to San Vicente, and then you'll continue westbound on Wilshire. Again, there are other routes that you can take, but this will be the signed detour. For eastbound, the detour will start at La Cienega, continuing east on Olympic, and then north on La Brea and east on Wilshire. And all of these side streets remain open, local access in here between the detour points, hard closure points, and the work zone um, while we're in the Wilshire-Fairfax intersection. So while we're also, uh, so while we're on Wilshire, we're also managing traffic on Fairfax. So the next slide shows the Fairfax detour. So this one's a little more straightforward. Um, this is, you're coming south on Fairfax, you'll go east on 6th, and then south on La Brea, west on Olympic, and then back south on Fairfax. Also, I know it's a lot of information to digest. This presentation is uh, online metro.net dash purple line ext, and, and I believe that you can get there through the brochure as well. So don't worry if you're trying to follow each detail, it's all uh, available online. So there's the Fairfax detour from one last time. Okay, so now we're through 14 weekends, right? We've decked from Ogden all the way through the Fairfax intersection and now we're west of Fairfax. So Fairfax has opened back up, more relief on Fairfax. We're now between Fairfax and Crescent Heights. And so the decking, the real heavy construction will be between Fairfax and just west of the 99 cent store and then the closure extends west to Crescent Heights. So this is the phase three detour uh, for Wilshire Boulevard. So westbound, down Fairfax. Fairfax is fully open at this point. Up San Vicente, back to Wilshire. Eastbound, it remains La Cienega, Olympic, La Brea, and back to Wilshire. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mindy, who's gonna talk about the community outreach, the, the media, and, and all of that great stuff. So you can see he gets really excited about those detours, which is why I'd like to let him talk about those things. Um, we are very, very big at communicating our construction information at Metro. So like John said, we send out a number of construction notices. We've kind of cut them down a little bit because we think people were getting a little annoyed with all of the notices. But we're very transparent and we're very available. And that's why I have a job because our jobs are to manage any issues that come up in the community, any concerns, any questions, any complaints. 
and we want you to be fully informed on what you can expect before you hit the street and go, oh my God, I didn't know that Fairfax was closed at 6th Street. So we do robust marketing and digital presence. We send a lot of construction notices by email, which is why I hope you've signed up. If you have and it's okay with you, we'll add you to our database and you can start receiving the emails about construction information and our Eat Shop Play program and all the other things that we do within the community by email. If you get annoyed or bored with those, you can you know, opt out, but we would love to have you as part of our digital family. Um, we do a number of community meetings all of the time. We have met with many of the stakeholders in this area with this upcoming construction for decking. We actually have a community-wide meeting coming up on January 19th at LACMA. Uh, that'll be Thursday from 6 to 8 at LACMA, and you can hear about the entire alignment in more detail. That would include what's happening at Western and what's going on at La Brea and what's also going on at La Cienega. We chose to focus on Fairfax for this meeting because you are basically at Fairfax, and we thought that this would be of vital importance to you at this point in time. We do schools, we do elected briefings, we do everything we set up there and often a lot more that I didn't put up there, but we're very, very available to you. And we wanna make sure that if you have questions or concerns, you can reach out to us. So like Billy said, we, this brochure is a replica of all of the detours and the maps that he showed you earlier on the digital presentation. And, um, oh, sorry, okay, there we go. But we also have a 24-7 hotline. So my business card is on the table, but we also have a project hotline card, which we have a 24-7 live operator available that if you're hearing something in the middle of the night and you think it's connected to our construction, they will contact me or whomever is, we have two other construction relations people on in the team and we rotate so that we're not always on call 24 seven, but you will be responded to in real time by a real person to answer your concerns. So at this time, I would like to open it up to questions in case we haven't dazzled you enough with information. So do, um, any of you have any questions that we might not have covered here? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, every time we send out a construction notice, it gets posted on our website, so it's in real time, and all of this information is also up on our website. Oh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, that would be me. Yes, that's. Yeah, okay, okay, so that's what I was just saying, because when I was doing this project for the ESCP, and this is where I wanted to talk to you, because I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Now, we do work with bus stops very closely, and there are times with certain phases of the construction that certain bus stops get relocated for that particular weekend or that a few days. Normally where the bus stops are right now during the piling and decking are where they are going to stay until we're done with decking, but there are going, because of the intersection work, there may be some Fairfax buses closer to 8th Street that may be um, inaccessible to the buses and they will be relocated, but we are, Billy and I work very, very closely with bus ops to make sure that those are posted. And if you have any questions, you can call us and we can let you know as well. Yes. Ms. Lake, will you be able to go north and south on Crescent Heights during the... Uh, yes. Crescent Heights is not impacted in any way by our project. There is another project on Crescent Heights that has their own traffic control plans because of their construction, and sometimes they close off northbound lanes occasionally to get their trucks in and out, but we will not be impacting Crescent Heights at all for north-south. You're welcome. Yes. Okay, westbound.
Well, so where the bus stops are currently located, they will remain in those in those locations. Not, yes, because the Fairfax, the Fairfax stop has moved west of Crescent Heights. So it, isn't, it is no longer, well, no, I'm sorry, there is a bus stop between Fairfax and Crescent Heights. Um, that bus stop will have to be relocated during the weekend closures for the third phase of the decking over the weekends. To, to answer your, your first question, uh, the weekends are the time to anticipate changes to bus routes and bus stops. Weekdays, typically, it'll, it'll be uh, it'll remain as is now. Okay, so, thank you. yep. You're welcome. Yes. Hi, what, uh, are you familiar with, uh, there are some groups that want to redesign the traffic flow on 6th Street? Are you familiar the, with The, the road, road diet. diet. Yes. Road diet. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, but I can't tell you what it is because as a, I have an opinion as a resident and a community person, but frankly, I don't, we don't have, Metro hasn't taken a position on that particular road diet. Um, that's really a community decision in, in working with CD4 uh, on, on their position. So Metro doesn't have an official position on that. Well, I think any alterations to the streets at this time, given that we are using 6th Street as the official detour route, could cause more confusion. But I don't, I don't know that it's impossible, but I, there are so many changes going on with the detours anyway that I think adding one, and the road diet is really a permanent implementation. So I, I, I mean, logically, I think it might be a little confusing for the drivers and possibly even the pedestrians and the cyclists, but I, it's not a, an official metro position. We're not getting involved in that decision. What I can tell you, though, is that the detour that we're using for the Fairfax decking is the exact same detour that we used at La Brea. It was, except with La Brea, we also had to cut it off a little further east at Highland at one point. But it's a, basically the same footprint for the westbound traffic. So it was all detoured to 6th Street. And for people that know the area, they can circumvent that. That's more intended for people that are heading westbound and all of a sudden got caught in that detour and didn't know where else to go. So I think that the locals, my experience of being a local, um, is that people know how to get around, and frankly, the weekends were so quiet in the area, because people that knew better just avoided the area altogether during the weekend decking. But I know that's a long answer to your question. I, 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 can, also, I can add that uh, uh, kind of, uh, similar to what you were saying, you know, that those two decisions, the, the decision to do a road diet and our detours those would not be done in a silo, in a sense. Uh, we don't know if the road diet's gonna happen, we, you know, we don't have a position on it, but it's certainly something that would be taken into consideration if it were to move forward while we're in the midst of this. It wouldn't be you know, um, something that we would ignore, let's say. Or LADOT, the Department of Transportation, they, they also would not ignore that, so. Any more questions? Yes. Which councilman told you that? That was uh, former councilman. Okay, well that was former councilman, former plan, previous to the Expo line opening when this project was at one time called the sub, possibly the subway to the sea. So at this moment in time, the Purple Line extension has no further terminus than the VA hospital just west of the San Diego freeway. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else? All right, well, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Um, I know it, at least it wasn't raining, so thank you very, very much, and Happy New Year, and please feel free to take the brochures 
It gives you all of the ways to contact us, short of carrier pigeon, but we're here for you. And if you haven't had enough information at this meeting and want to hear a little more detail about the other stations, please come to LACMA on the 19th from 6 to 8 in the Brown Auditorium at the front, and then you can hear you can ignore this section because you'll have just heard it, but there's other details, and we also have a remarkable Eat, Shop, Play program where we promote local business amongst people in the community. So if that's it, thank you very much. Yes, thank you all. Thank you very much. Any other questions before we find people? Uh, Mrs. Lake, we want to thank you so You're much. You're very for welcome. Here thank you. For giving us this wonderful uh, demonstration. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, the literature is in the back and they would like you to sign in on their list. You'll be able to contact them through their website and also the Residents Association website, www.pldra.org, will carry portions of tonight's meeting for the benefit of you and for our friends and neighbors who couldn't make it. Thank you very much for coming. And we appreciate it. We look forward to having you with us again on February 9th when our current council member, Mr. Rue, will be with us.